Hello guys and welcome back to a new video and in today's video we are going to learn how you can connect Google search API to your AI agents and that too completely free. So if you're building AI agents you know the biggest bottleneck that you might face is to connect it to the internet. Many people prefer the API's default web rag browser or SERP AI APIs but then they have to pay a hefty bill for that. But you are going to implement it for free after this video. This is Kev and you're watching Brain It. Let's get started. All right, so we are on my screen and just to give you an idea about what problem statement we are going to solve in this video and what is exactly the requirement of the Google search API integration into our AI agents. Let me show you this automation that I am recently working on. So this is a pretty simple automation. What it does is it takes the data and uh, it then make my AI agent then makes few Google research about a particular person or a particular topic. Then it gathers that information and then it updates the respective information into Google Sheets. OK. Now, there are two problems in this uh, automation right now, which I have faced um, up till now since the time I have developed this. The very first is the Appify web search node. By the way, if any one of you have not heard about Appify. It is the uh, best marketplace for different kind of APIs that you can get for your AI agents to work with. So there you'll find a web browser specifically for AI agents called Rag Web Browser. So many of the videos on YouTube that are available, they use this node here and they connect it with AI agent in order to get, get give the AI agent the access to internet. Okay. Now, the very first problem with this node is that you need to add the query uh, in this format. That is, you need to leave the query to the AI agent to handle that. And that is very risky because many a times you might encounter this error of input is not valid. Uh, the query is required. That means many of the times AI agent misses the query part. OK, and many of the time the execution goes to error. So um, the AI agent, when it misses the query parameter, there is no query to search for and therefore your automation might land up, might land up to errors. OK, so this is the first problem that we encounter. Uh, not me, any of the user who uses RAG web search encounters this issue. OK, the second problem that uh, you might encounter is let's say your AI agent was successful enough to make the research or to make the search using this note. OK, now when you receive the data, let's say uh, you set uh, the limit of five, you know, five responses or five results, top five results from this note. So the data is so massive that your AI agent might not be able to handle that amount of data. So there are a lot of markdown, you know, tags and different kind of descriptions being generated. If if any of you, one of you have used this node, you might definitely know what I'm talking about. So there is a lot of data. Just if even if you return like two to three top results, you'll encounter a lot of data and the input token might not be able to fit in for the AI agent. So let's say I was using like Google 2.5 flash for this purpose because it has a large input token and I was trying to like use 4.1 mini and 4.0 mini because they do have a large uh, input token but th that didn't work for me honestly because uh, like large data is not at all processable by such model LLM models okay we need to find some like a way in order to feed that data to our LLM models. So as we discussed, there are two problems in this automation. One is the Appify web search, which is not working like it might work. It might not work. The surety is not there. The second thing is the amount of input data that we are getting or that we are feeding to our AI agent. So the LLM model is not able to process that at one go. OK, so we'll we'll discuss the solution for both these problems. But for now, let's start with fixing the web search thing and let's integrate Google search into our flow. So for that, you'll have to first go to Google Cloud Console. Uh, for the new visitors who are like completely new to Google Cloud Console, uh, you might end up having a different screen of, you know, first you'll have to register yourself. Not a big process. 
first you it will ask you to like log in and then it will ask you to you know create a project name just just go with the flow that google provides you and you'll then have the screen over here okay once you are done with all the process you'll find a quick access tab of apis and services click on that once you add the api okay once you're at the apis and services search for custom search okay so the very first step is going to you know download and install custom search api whenever we'll get the api's api key so we, we should have the access of custom search click on this for me it's it's manage for you it'll have a button of enable just click on enable and you will get uh, the custom search api started okay go back and come back to api and services and go to credentials okay so once you're at the credentials the second step is going to create an api key over here how you're going to create an api key click on create credentials drop down then click on api key and uh, give any random name let's say api test dash dash one any kind of name that you would like to give to the api key don't like don't tickle any of these options and just create on uh, click on create i have already created two so i'll not be doing that once you'll click on create you'll have your api key in this manner and then you'll have to copy the api key and you'll have to preserve it somewhere because we'll need that api key for our further proceedings okay once you have set the api services you have downloaded custom search you have made your api key now the third step is to you know set up the interface that our ai agent will actually be using for the google search so the way we have a browser interface uh, we'll be giving our ai agent the same type of interface but it is going to be digitally digital and through apis okay so in order to get that uh, interface what you'll have to do is you'll have to go to this programmable search engine i'll provide the link in the description what basically a google programmable search engine is as the name suggests it is a programmable search engine basically google search for any of your applications okay so regardless of what the type of application is it is a web app or it's an ai agent or a mobile app you can well, you can create a programmable search engine right here and you can integrate it to your application okay so this is what programmable search engine means i'll provide the link to the description of all the documentations and you can go check out and read everything about it okay for the first visitors you'll not see any engine over here because you haven't created any before if you have created good you can create an another one or you can use your pre-existing one what I'll suggest is create an another one, click on add, then it will show you to create a new search engine option. Just name anything you want your search engine name to be. What to search? Search the entire web and search settings. Click on save search. Always enable it because um, you know you don't know what all things your AI agent will be surfing on the internet and what it might encounter. So there can be any malicious script or let's say any kind of a virus that it might encounter and it would bring it back as a result of the search so we won't want all those uh, uh, drama things to happen just click on the captcha and you'll get an option let's say you'll get an option of creating uh, like you'll get the option to click create now you have your search engine created okay now what you need to take care of is this field over here so if i'll if i zoom it a bit what you can see is you can see uh like like a markdown thing over here you don't have to worry about anything of that you just have to note this the cx thing over here so copy this thing basically this is the main part that we need this is the uh, programmable search engine id or api you can say which we'll be using or our system will be using to to get the search thing done okay so copy this part over here and preserve it somewhere in order for further usages another thing which i completely forgot to tell you guys and which is an interesting part of this video is 
just head towards your Google Cloud settings and uh, click on Enabled API and Services. Here you'll find your custom search API option. Just click on that. Uh, all right, now comes the best part. In order to make the custom search API unlimited for your use case, what you'll have to do is you'll have to do two things. You'll have to first come to this cost tab. And uh, for me, it is showing that you you like some other option. It will ask you to set up a billing account. Now, for those who are completely new and they don't know about Google billing account, basically it's uh, the, like Google takes few credentials of yours in order to create a billing account. So whenever you exceed your free limits, you can be charged onto that account. Okay. So now what happens is whenever you are at a free plan or you haven't registered your, you can say your uh, billing account, you haven't set your billing account. What Google does is in the quotas and systems limit, I'll show you. You can see there are unlimited options to be given over here, like the queries per minute values unlimited. The queries per day value is too huge. It's 10,000 queries per day and you can make an un unlimited number of queries per minute. It depends on your system and your usage. Okay. But for the start, you'll only get 100 queries per minute. Sorry, 10 queries per minute and 100 queries per day. That's very less. So in order to extend that limit, what you'll have to do is just come to the cost part and uh, click on the billing account that it will like ask you to create and uh, you you just you don't have to do anything and you'll not be charged any penny for this you don't have to worry about anything just put in your card details or any kind of payment details that you have and uh, you'll get your billing account ready and then you can link it to uh, your cloud id over here and then you'll get the quota ready okay i would suggest don't proceed further without creating and linking a billing account to your cloud ID because then you'll not be able to, you know, enjoy the unlimited services that this API has to give to you. Okay. So first go through this step. All right. So now you have your API keys, you have your programmable search credentials done. Now the next step is going to install what is called a Google search node for your NATN. Okay. So there are two methods. What you can do is you can just go to programmable search and you can go through the rest API documentations and you can make custom API calls on your own. But trust me, it's very tricky and very tough for anyone who's using it for the very first time or who is going through, you know, technical document documentations at the very first time for for the other people who don't want to have this kind of hassle just visit this uh, node package manager thing this and sorry this n and node i'll provide the link in the description just copy the name complete name okay go to your n and settings the same way the community nodes click install and just uh, state the npm package manager name click this checkbox and click on install you will have the Google search node installed. Now, what this actually does, let me show you. So this is the optimized flow, the optimized version actually of the previous flow that we discussed in the start. Okay. Now, when you will go to your N10 node section and you will search Google search, You'll have this uh, node over here. You'll have a node. You'll have a tool option too. You can click on that and you can add it to your workflow. What did, what this does is it's it's very easy to use this node. And that's the best part of this, this node and this video as well. You get multiple options. Like you can perform an in-depth search. You can perform an image search. You can perform restricted search. You can like add your filters. You can add your file type and number of things that you, you know, exactly get at the Epify, uh, RAG web browser thing or any kind of SERP API, API documentation thing as well. Okay. The best part is you need to add your search query over here and uh, the resources to make a 
custom search and you can state your limits and you are all good to go that's it it's that simple okay now in order to create the credentials all you need to do is to like add your details over here and uh, what details do we need the api key that you created and the search engine id or the programmable search details that i asked you to save okay so just paste your api key just paste your search engine id um okay let me let me do it for you guys okay you'll paste the search uh, engine id over here you'll paste your api key over here and then you are done you will have to hit save and you are done okay you can name uh, if you want the credentials to be named and then you are all done okay i'm not doing this right now because i already have my credentials up and running okay so our google search problem is solved okay our uh, system is now able to access the internet and it is able to get the information and uh, it is all up to date now comes the second problem of uh, you know storing and processing that much amount of data now how that can be done is uh, you can break your automation into two steps as i have done over here the very first step will involve generating query as i have made a query generator over here okay so the first step will involve generating the queries related to your topic or related to your automation feeding those queries one by one into this module then then storing all that information into a vector store now what a vector vector store is you might have heard about rag and different things you can you can just understand vector store as a storage unit where you are keeping all your information in a format that's the best part in a format that llm will definitely understand it okay so whatever the size of data is llm breaks down into a cloud format okay and uh, then it stores it at a particular place where it's very easy for the llm to understand all the data at one go so whatever the amount of data is when you store that data in a vector store the llm is very 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 prompt and is very smart enough to get that information extract the relevant information and use it for your purpose okay so what I've done is I have stored all the search queries into a vector store. If you want me to explain you what a vector store is, how many types are there and how you can use different types for different purposes, just, just comment below and I'll make a separate video of it. Okay. So all the search queries going into a vector store. Now the second part, the second part. The second part is this over here where we have all the all the search queries related to the particular topic now when it's done i execute an another subflow and this sub this subflow where i have made an another agent where it's getting all the information that we have stored and then it's using that information to create something that we were looking for so remember the first version of our automation where we were directly connecting the search node to our ai agent that was like the naive and very outdated approach and this is this is a very optimized approach where you'll have multiple search queries and different type of data you are storing it somewhere at the very first step then the second step is to process that data by another ai agent okay so basically this is your main ai agent this is your main ai agent this is all the site counterparts that uh, is easing out the work of the main ai agent okay so this approach just go with this approach and you'll definitely you know get benefit and the, the benefit of this approach, I'll tell you very quickly. Number one, you will not have to worry about input tokens and uh, this will ultimately lead you to, you know, stop burning all the money that you're putting into your LLM tokens. Okay. So the amount that you're burning will reduce the input tokens will reduce and you'll get an optimized response from your data. Okay. And this is the end of this video. I hope I was able to add some value to your lives through this video. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it with your friends. Until next time.
This is KF signing off.